watched last week because I wanted to kind of give my thoughts on the Bethune game. But I'm gonna give a, just give a few, move on to Temple, and, and, and let's talk about what it, what it means to be a Miami Hurricane. Let's, let's have that discussion. So, um, just a few things from the Bethune game. I thought the offense played well. It was good to see Tyler, you know, keep the ball on the on the option play. I think it's going to come in handy for us, you know, as the season moves on because I was concerned with, you know, sometimes you're going to play those athletic defensive ends, and if they know that you're just giving the ball every single play and, you know, you're kind of down blocking and stuff, then more than likely they're going to eventually start catching guys in the backfield. And I think that has happened on some of our run plays this particular year. So it's good to see that Tyler at least going to make that guy think twice now, seeing as that he pulled it. So, so that, that was good to see. Um, running back position, bro. It's like flavor of the month with this, right? Flavor of the month because after Kane's fist, it was AJ Allen's the best running back on the team, right? I wasn't at Kane's Fest. I didn't see it, but that was the talk of the social media space that A.J. Allen just was a monster. He was a beast, right? So then the season starts to play Miami of Ohio. Then it's, man, Mark Fletcher's the guy. You know what I mean? So then we play Bethune. Don Chaney looks explosive. Look like he hasn't lost a burst, anything. He still looks like the grown man that he's looked like in the limited reps that we've seen him in the actual games this particular year. So now I saw someone say, but Don Chaney should be the starting running back, right? Now, I've made it known. Look, I'm biased towards Don Chaney. I'm biased, right? Don Chaney's my second favorite player on the team behind Jacoby George. But I also said that he's going to have to work. If he wants that spot, he's going to have to work. And so against Bethune was a good showing, but you have to keep working. I did a video in the offseason about Henry Parrish, and I felt that Henry Parrish was coming into the season with a huge chip on his shoulder. And that was before A.J. Allen even, even, that was before he got here, I believe, right? And for whatever reason, it's like the consistent guy, the guy that last year was – forced to run behind the offensive line that probably was worse than what he ran behind at Ole Miss. It's like he's not getting the his just due for whatever reason, you know. Um, I ate some crow on Henry Parrish last year because I didn't think Henry Parrish was any better than Rooster or Dunn, and that's not, that's not taking anything away from him because that's just how highly I thought of Rooster and Dunn. But he hasn't done anything to lose his job. Now, as the season goes on, he knows what has to be done to, you know, continue to start the season, you know, start the game, the game's moving forward. And I'm happy. He's a consistent guy. I like it. I like our running back. I don't, you know, honestly, even though I'm biased against Dunn, whoever's in the backfield, whoever's getting the ball, making plays, moving the sticks, it doesn't matter to me, right? I'm not going to sit here and go back and forth about whose attributes are better than whose attributes because I saw someone, this is how quickly things change, right? AJ Allen went from being the next coming of Clint Portis to I saw someone say that, bro, he's been in the game like, like, bro, it's mid. And I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> it's crazy, right? But anyway, wide receiver position. Um, it's Kobe George and X looking good. Kobe Young is looking good. I know he dropped, you know, the two balls in it. Well, dropped one pass and then formed the ball at the goal line. I know some people are kind of harping on it, but I look at it from this standpoint. I think it can, I think against Temple, um, but it, they, they say it's going to be raining, right? It's, it's supposed to be raining, but depending on how, how much it rains, I do think that we could see a situation similar to uh, Jacoby George muffed the punt against Texas A&M, Tyler Van Dyke you know, showing the leadership characteristics that we've been asking him to show. Went over to George, say, hey, look, um, you're about to have the greatest game of your entire career. And he went out there and did that. So I think maybe some of the same things were said to, to Kobe Young. And if it's not raining too much, 
I would not be surprised to see a game plan that shows Kobe Young involved often and early in offense. Now, again, I'm biased to Jacoby George. I want Jacoby George to get those touches, and I got Jacoby George on my fantasy team. But at the end of the day, understand. What's up, Wayne? Go Canes. So that's that. You know what I mean? That's that. Um, offensive line did well. Defensive side of the ball, hey, we held them to less yards this year than we did last year. So, so, so that is that is a plus. That is a that's a big positive. That's a big positive, right? Um, it was good to see Jaden Harris. Jaden Harris is is quickly becoming one of my favorite players on the team. So it was good to hear about Shannon Dawson told more before the Jacoby Bone. Yeah, I saw that Wayne, and and I hey look, I like it. I, I like I I liked it. I was on uh, the message board, and I was just jokingly saying it. But I was like, throw the ball to George. And he threw the ball to George. So, I'm fine. So, you know, I was happy. I was happy to see it. I'm, I'm glad that we have we, we are going to be aggressive. You know what I mean? And it's also interesting to say, for Mario to say, I don't think we're going to be able to run the clock down. And I'm like, bruh. We 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 not trying to hear that. As Dowson said, we're gonna end this ML for now, and that's what I want to hear. So hopefully, <laughs> I didn't like Mario saying what he said, but I like that Dowson said what he said, and that Mario trusted Dowson to. Hey, they come out, they match up. We going vertical. I like I like that. You know what I mean? But within that little interaction, Mario basically handed the keys over the offense by not second. Yeah, he did. And and I and I'm and I'm happy that he did that because those type of situations are going to happen um, against North Carolina, against Clemson, against Florida State, and even against Louisville, which is a team that I think that based on where they're positioned on the schedule is a is a is one of those games where we better be on our on our P's and Q's. But yeah, he's gonna it, it it's gonna have to happen, right? It's gonna have to happen, but. Jaden Harris. Um, Jaden Harris has given us cornerback ability at the safety position. I think Mario said what he said, trying to challenge Dawson to run the club with Dawson in time. Yeah, he ain't that type of play caller. And I'm glad that, again, Dawson is man enough to say, look, bro, that's not that's not in my DNA. And because that was, the, that was hey, I'm not going to pretend like I'm I'm perfect. I've, I've called everything. But that was the biggest thing that I, that I, that I had. In a situation like that, is Mario going to overextend himself or is he going to let the guys that he paid to do a job do the job? So I'm happy that that, that he allowed that to happen because he very well could have said, hey, look, and let's just run this. We've been leaning on them all. We've been leaning on them all game. So let's just go ahead and let's finish it physically. You know, so I understand that. But. And so Jaden Harris gives us corner cornerback ability. I remember I did the video over the spring, well, in the off season where he was he was one of the fastest players on the entire team. So I think that is something that we have not had at the safety position, even back going back to Sean Taylor and Ed Reed days, where we have a guy that is just that fast playing the cornerback position. And I think the sky's the limit for Jaden Harris. I think in this little time where Cam is out. It's going to be very interesting and very pivotal to see how Jaden Harris actually develops in this time. You know what I mean? Because obviously for the staff to feel like that, hey, Cam is going down and the next man up is Jaden Harris, that says a lot about how they feel about him as a, a guy that understands that particular role because Cam is the brains. Not taking anything away from James, not taking anything from Francisco, but Cam is the brains, Cam is the instinct of it. So for them to feel that Jaden Harris is a guy that can fill in and do exact, well not do exactly what Cam is doing, but can bring that to the defense, that speaks volumes. A guy that was essentially underrated when he came, he was a three-star player when he came. And this nod of you can come in behind Cam Kitchens, bro, you, hey, you showing that you have five-star intangibles and five-star tangibles at that, right? So, I'm happy about that. I'm happy about that, right? Um, and then I want to say something about X, right? 
before the season, this is how things change, right? Um, before the season, you know, I did a video in the off season, and I said, it "Was is X on the cusp of having a Braxton Berrios type of season?" And at the rate that X is going, I like Jaden Harris a lot, but what does that say about Brian Bailum get better? Hey, it says nothing about Brian Bailum. Bailum. It says that hey, you got to work. That's 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 all it says to me. You got to work. Um, I think. I'm guilty of this myself, and I think a lot of Kays fans are guilty of this. There's certain players that we we attach ourselves to. Those guys are the guys that we like, and we want to see those guys play. Not saying that, not saying Wayne that you have an that you have an affinity for Brian Balaam, but that's my first instinct when I, you know, when people ask me, well, what do you think about him passing certain play? I don't think anything about it. I mean, the objective is to put the best players on the field. Everybody's not gonna make it. That's why less than two percent of players actually make it to the NFL. And part of that is guys are getting passed up on the depth chart in college. So um, I know Brian Balaam. It's a you know it was a, a good story. I know before Mario, I mean before Manny got here, um, you know he was a guy that people were were very high on. Um, isn't he the one that transferred and came back? I'm not I'm not sure. I, I kind of get the guys kind of misconstrued, but. That's what that says to me, that, hey, you got to work. Jaden Harris is gone from coming in as a corner to coming in as now you're the second string, the second string free safety. And depending on how long Cam is out, you're about to put on some, you're, you're about to get some major, major reps. And if Cam does leave for the NFL next year, you're in the driver's seat to become the starting free safety next year. So, Grab the opportunity by the horns, young man, and let's 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 ride, let's roll. You you're fast. You bring cornerback ability to the safety room, which is something that we haven't had in a very very long time, right? So I'm happy for the young man, you know. And Brian Balaam, hey hey work, that's, hey work, that's that's the motto. Work. So um, but getting back to the X though, right? X is on pace of having a season that is better than Braxton Berrios' 2016 and 2017 season. That's what he's on track for. So I saw somebody on Twitter ask the question, and I said, this is how, this is how things change so quickly. Someone asked, who's the better UM receiver, Braxton Berrios or Xavier Restrepo? Now, that's an interesting question. But like I said on a video that I did in the offseason, I said I'm not going to minimize Braxton Berrios' career to just 2017. And I'm not definitely not going to just, at the conclusion of this season, just limit Restrepo's career to just this one season that he's having right now. But what I will say about this is that X playing the way that he's playing, there's still people who feel like, well, why isn't this player playing? Why isn't this player playing? And I'm thinking to myself, like, bro, the man is producing. He's leading the team in catches. He's leading the team in receiving yards. And I'm just, bro, I'm just, I was just so amazed at the Texas AM game where it it literally showed me like, yes, you and TVD are indeed roommates. Y'all are indeed best friends. Because I'm seeing X out here ad libbing, pointing this, doing all this particular stuff like this. TVD, okay, this we saw this on film. I know what you're about to do. Option this thing up. He's catching the ball. I remember last season someone said, "Oh man, X has drop issues. He dropped more passes than Braxton Berrios." I went, I simply went to PFF, and that 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 just wasn't true. <laughs> that just wasn't true. He hasn't dropped any more passing than Braxton Berrios did throughout his career at the University of Miami. I'm happy for X. Again, I'm biased to Jacoby George, but I'm not so biased that I'm not about to tip my hat to Xavier Restrepo and give him the acknowledgement that he needs. Now, we want to see you get in the end zone, but X is getting us down the field. X is the leader of that wide receiver room without question. X x is a leader on the team why what you say that just was it wasn't true it wasn't <laughs> you know what i'm saying it, it wasn't it, it wasn't true you know but i'm happy for x man i'm happy 
And if and and this is just me just thinking out loud, bro. X number seven. Now I know Mario has a you know the affinity for number one, but I think number seven, if X leaves this year, whenever X leaves, that number, and I know some people in the LSU may say, Oh, they biting us our number seven. Like, no, 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 no. Number seven should be a jersey of the hardest working offensive player. Right? It shouldn't, it, you know, just hardest working offensive player. Because that's what X has been doing ever since he's been here. And I think to myself that if X hasn't had to, hadn't had to deal with the injuries and the setbacks that he's had to have, um, and obviously, again, you know, Gaddish last year, so, I mean, that offense didn't do anybody any favors. But X would be, man, X X could be threat threatening. He's going he's gonna to threat. If, again, if he comes back next year and Tyler comes back or if Emory or bringing the transfer, X has the opportunity to leave here as a top five, maybe even top three um, career receiving yards. Maybe even catches in UM history. Right? So, X very well could lead the University of Miami as a better wide receiver statistically than Braxton Berrios, especially if this season goes the way that it's trending right now, where he's trending to have over 1,200 yards receiving. Right? So, let's address the Ibis in the room, not the elephant. Not the elephant, because the elephants are the, are the crimson tide. That's Alabama. The ibis. Real cane over here. It's just the ibis in the room, right? Um, Lonzo Highsmith came out, said what he said, and I have mixed emotional eggs, and it has nothing to do with his ability. Wayne, what, Wayne, let me let me let me let me know what you what it is about his ability. Let me let me let me know. Let me know. I'll uh, I'll read it. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see where you're coming from. Pause. <laughs> Pause. <laughs> um. But yeah, Zoe said what he said, and I have mixed. I have mixed. I have mixed feelings about it. I have mixed feelings about it because I was on Canesville during the off season, and they had Sap on, and Sap made mention that he, he talked to Alonzo Highsmith again. Preface this by saying. It's always two sides to the story, and the, and the truth is somewhere in the middle, right? Mel Tucker, yeah, yeah. Oh, we know where Mel was coming from, Pauls. We know where he was coming from. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, but he said he reached out to Zoe. He asked him that he said, hey, look, um, I want to work with the defensive lineman, right? He mentioned that he did not like the – what didn't really understand what coach Joe Salavea was doing in terms of the bag drills and stuff like that. So he wanted to come in and help. So Zoe told him, according to Warren Sapp, that, hey, I talked to somebody and I believe he got back with him and said, hey, look, you can get a couple of minutes with the guys. And Sapp was like, yeah, I don't really want a couple of minutes. I want to, hey, Ellen, I don't really want a couple of minutes. I, I kind of want to do my thing, right? So that's what made me kind of scratched my head when Zoe said bunker mentality we're going to keep our bunker mentality it's like no like Sam said he reached out now again it's again it's two sides to a story but that was just my thing about it right and the other thing about it is I tell anybody I'm a football fan first I'm a Miami Hurricane and a Vegas Raider fan second right and the reason that I say that is because I'm not a fanatic. I'm not a fanatic. And what I've realized in this little exchange since last, because it was all good Thursday. Then Sunday morning, all heck broke, all heck broke loose with pictures and, and videos and all. X is telling it, but how much of what we're getting from him is because of TVD just trying to get his guy to ball. I believe Rashad can play the same role. You know what? Wayne. I cannot disagree with you in any shape, form, or fashion with that with that statement. I kind of thought I, I I was thinking. I said I wonder where you're going with this, but I, hey, I agree. You know what I mean? I I, I can agree. Um, that that very well could be the case. But this is what I but this is what I'll say about this though. Um, my only retort to that would be. Is Brashad out working X in practice? Roommate aside, 
Is Brashad outworking X in practice? Is he outworking him in the wide receiver room when they work when they're looking at film? You know what I mean? That's the only thing that I say. If we're talking about just opportunity, yeah, Brashad should get some more opportunities. But are you are you outworking X for those opportunities? Now that I don't have the question to, right? I think we all can look at it and say, yes, Brashad is more talented, Brashad is faster, Brashad may be more explosive and all that stuff. But I think like, is he smarter than X? Not taking anything away from Bashad, but is he is he is he smarter than X? Is he is he as trustworthy as X? Right? Is he sitting at the front of the room in the wide receiver room? Like, what is he doing? I think that is what's separating the two. That's what separates with the coach. That's what separates X to the coaches must be. Yeah, I mean that's that's the only other thing I can that's the only thing I can say. Similar to, you know, we was like you brought up Brian Balaam, and you know we're talking about Jaden Harris, and that's that's my whole thing about it. Like. What are you showing the coaching staff for them to keep putting you on the field, right? And obviously they're using Brashard a different way than they're using X because, you know, Brashard gets in the game, we run jet sweep and stuff like that. And I think it was – I think Coach Hayes may have brought it up, but it was something someone – a caller called in and said, like, hey, let's see X – let's see Brashard with X playbook. Let's see – let's let's see what we can do. Yeah, got to reward the hard work. Yeah, I mean, that's – I mean, it's kind of – you you gotta you gotta you gotta reward him and he's 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 getting it done man he's making tough catches he's out there blocking like i said just it's a lot of maybe minute things that x is doing that maybe brashad isn't doing not saying that brashad can't do them but i don't i don't think that x is on the field just i mean part of it is probably because tvd trusts him but i don't think tvd can come out to the staff and say look hey i like you know, like X over Brashard and Ray Ray, so you know, I'm gonna get him the ball more to keep him on the field. I, I don't think it's anything like that, but I just think it's like an emphasis for you know, Coach, you know, Kevin Beard just got here, so I think all the wide receivers start off with a clean slate, which that's how it should be. And I just think X is 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 working, right? Um, but yeah, getting back to the Ibis in the room, so um, I don't. I, I think Mike and Dion are like best friends, right? And one of the things about it is that I think people have friends, but I don't know how many people like have like best, best friends, right? I know Mike has been through some things. Prime has been through some things. And like I said, I'm not a fanatic. I didn't have a problem with Mike having on the Colorado shirt like most people, like I see a lot of people do, because I'm looking at it from the standpoint, it's like, look, I'm supporting my friend. I'm not I'm not downing my particular university. And someone brought up the point was like, well, why was Mike not on the sideline for Texas A&M game? And my first instinct was, well, maybe we did have a situation with the hotel. I mean, maybe Mike doesn't need to be in Miami, you know what I mean? I mean, maybe he doesn't, maybe he didn't need to be in Miami. I mean, I don't know what it is, right? But I just don't like the fact that people are trying to turn their back on and trying to say who's a real cane. Like I see that on Twitter, like, look, I don't dis, I don't dislike anybody if they show particular stats, but it's like, bro, this person is the reason that we are a fan of the team. Point blank and period. Now, we all may have our certain favorite canes. Like, my favorite cane of all time is Willis McGahee. Somebody else's favorite cane may be Jerome Brown. Maybe Michael Irvin. Maybe Santana Moss. Maybe Edron James. Who knows? Shoot, somebody's favorite cane may be Kevin Beard, Mike Rump, Mario Cristobal. But I don't think, like, it's, 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 so, much positive, it's so much positivity going on right now with the program, bro. We just beat an SEC team. And not just beat them because of the final score. Like, we beat them. Like, second quarter, like I said on on my on the on my review of the game, second quarter, I said we are better than them. Um, TVD is playing some of the best ball in the entire country. We got three wide receivers that are are tearing it up. We got Ruben Bain getting in the game, getting held. Hey, I'm getting to the quarterback. We got Jaden Wayne. Coach, Coach Chris Ball said Jaden Wayne is about to be a bigger part of the defense right now. 
We got Francisco Mary Gore. We got James Williams playing at a level that we wanted him to play at. We got all that going on. But we got people that are wasting time trying to say who's a real king. That's all today. It's Will Fork and Ed Reed at practice, right? Ed Reed picture was from last year, right? But Vince was there. Again, I may mention when I touched on this last week, last time, pause. I said Andre Johnson was at the other game, and nobody cared. Nobody even brought it up. Andre was there. So, though Mike... Hall of Fame, Kyle, I don't think he holds that much weight recruit, so it does Hey, I'm glad you said that because I'll just because that, that that segues me into another point. I saw somebody say, bro, you don't think Mike being out there, Dion gonna use as a, re a recruit employee. And I'm sitting there thinking to myself, bro, who do you think the last wide receiver recruit Mike talked to? What can Mike talk to? What can Mike say about to a wide receiver commit in 2023? I, I said it on the, I said it on the message board. I said, bro, this recruits right now, parents weren't even born when Michael Irvin played for the University of Miami. So these people know Michael Irvin from the doggone Cowboys. They don't know Mike from Miami. That's my whole thing. So, like, my point would be like this: It'd be different if, let's say, Travis Benjamin was over there. And let's say Devin Hester was over there with Colorado stuff on. I still won't b get bent out of shape about it. But I would say, well, yeah, those guys are a little bit closer to the generation. These do these young dudes know nothing about him except the things they've Exactly. Exactly. And I'm and, and, and to me, honestly, I don't know much about Michael Irvin. But I mean, you Google his name, some good stuff come up, some questionable stuff come up. You right, Ellen. People, no, Ellen, no. I don't want, no, no. I don't want to say they have a reason to be mad. They want to have a reason to argue. Think about this. We have been a, a, we've been like this for the past, since 2003. We've been like this, right? So, Dion always showed Miami love and shot Miami. Yeah. But right now, we're in a, we're in a place where, we have nothing bad to say. And I, I consider myself objective. I'm, I'm critical of things, but I have nothing to be objective about right now. I have nothing to be critical about. I am so happy right now. And I think some people is like, bruh, yes, things are going great, but we need something to argue about. Not be mad about, but to argue about. And I think, I think, and I think that's what it is. I think it's just, that's a side effect of us being like this since 2003. It's nothing, it's nothing negative going on. Offensive line playing great. Quarterback playing great. Receivers playing great. Defense playing great. There's nothing bad to be said. So you, so now it's like, you know what? Let's attack Michael Irvin. Let's attack Warren Sapp. Let's attack Dwayne The Rock Johnson. So much so that someone said, oh, see, Alonzo made the call. You see The Rock out here tweeting out a commitment. It's like, bro, what about the guys that just left? DJ Ivan should be tweeting this out. Jalen Phillips, Greg Rousseau, Gregory Rousseau, they should be tweeting that out. You know? But it is what it is, man. I mean, I don't want this to. And then, and then it's the other thing they bite about it. They get, they get to me. It's like you guys say you don't want to hear anything or talking. To, I saw a tweet trying to show Shadur in a bad way because he fixed his rolling, but cameraman asked him like Miami. For... <sighs> Ellen, that goes back to the other point though, because you got the people saying that Dion is trying to re uh, uh, recreate the hurricanes of the '80s in Boulder, and I'm like. I don't see that. What I see, I see prime time in 2023. I see what pick y'all got. Oh, I'm going to be gone. I see Dion coming back to the Georgia Dome after being traded to the 49 and saying, this is my house. This is my house. I see a man returning a punt 
for a touchdown and then playing in the World Series all in the same day. I see the shuffle. I see man fighting Andre Rising. That's what I see. We're talking about Deion Sanders. Deion Sanders in the 90s was up there with Michael Jordan. Well, he wasn't as high as Mike, but he was up there. That's what I see. Deion Sanders is, is, is more famous than any Miami Hurricane player, period. That's no knock to a Miami Hurricane player, but that's just what Deion meant to the game. Deion is a top five all-time player of all time in the NFL, not based on his position, nothing. You're a top five player of all time, and a lot of that is because of that bravado that you bought. So what, what we're seeing is we're seeing prime time being manufactured at a high level. That's what, that's, that's what I see. I mean, that's that's all I see, right? But, again, but getting back to it. Guys say they don't want to hear about Colorado. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to hear nothing about Colorado. And I agree. I don't want to hear nothing about Colorado either. But you're going to keep talking about it because now it's like, oh, well, Vince Wilfork was at practice. So what are we going to do now? So anytime a, a former Kane comes to practice, someone's going to get a picture and say, oh, Real canes don't don't switch colors. So let's say Devin Hester come to practice tomorrow. So we're gonna hear we're gonna have Devin Hester there, Adrian Giant. That's what we're gonna have. This is the game that we're gonna play the rest of the season. Like, bro, we just too much positivity going on, bro, to be talking about this foolishness, man. Like for real. And I'm not saying the people that's talking about it are foolish, but it's like, bro, some of you are taking guys playing at a school for three to four years and treating it like they got a brand on the on their back saying property of university of miami athletics bro we we just re we just started reimbursing facts facts two things that we learned about that that first university of miami documentary that 30 for 30. one thing is we put some bad we put some great teams on the field and secondly the University of Miami did not like the imagery. Lamar Thomas said it. They want us on the halls, but they don't want us. No, they want us on the walls, but they don't want us in the halls. That's what Lamar Thomas said. So you can take with that. <laughs> you can do with that whatever you want to do with it, right? But yeah, we just started re -embracing. Like, think about this. Like, it wasn't this much backlash last year when Brad Kaya was on Texas A&M sidelines last year. Why was Brad there? Brad said University of Miami got a, got a rule that said you can't be on the sideline unless you was an All-American. Think about that. Brad wanted to be on the sideline, but the University of Miami got a rule saying, oh, well, if you want an All-American, you can't be on the sideline. So you're on Texas A&M side. Did anybody... Did anybody say any? Did anybody? What was it? This blown up? No, it wasn't. But this right here, some guys that played before <laughs> some of our parents were even born. Oh, it's a problem. It should have been a problem that Brad couldn't have been on the sideline last year. That's the problem. That's the problem. It's a problem that. I, but I don't want to go down that road, though. I, I, I didn't get, I've addressed the Ibis in the room. The Ibis. Not the elephant. The Ibis. No one's complaining when Warren Sapp had to sit in the bleachers last year and could be on the Man, Wayne, you making too much sense right now. X catch, punch, five yards. I saw this on the... Hey, king of battle. Like anybody else say, <laughs> they must be coaching it. Because if you continue to make the same mistake over and over again, you gotta be coaching it. That, that's all I got. And and that's the one. That was one of the things that I said in my Bethune breakdown. Is I said I don't want to see guys catching a ball inside the five, inside the ten, or whatever like that. Because in a big game setting, you just gotta let the ball. You gotta let it roll. Even if you are over talented against Bethune, I need to see those type of things because those those small things can come back and kick us and, and, and kick us in the butt. 
right? He can kick us in the butt. Luckily, we had enough offensive power, enough offensive firepower to overcome that against Texas A&M. But you might not be lucky next time. Just and that's just that's the way it is. So, so I understand what you're saying, King of Battle. But my thing is, is if he's continuing to do it, then that means they that means from a coaching standpoint, they don't have a problem with him doing it. That's all I got to say about that. But. Say a little bit about Temple. I'm going to get out of here, man. I appreciate y'all rocking out with me, man. Um, <laughs> They 2-1. The only Power 5 opponent that they played was Rutgers. They lost 35-7, to seven, I believe. Quarterback is co completing less than 55% of his passes. Um, I see their slot receivers, their leading receivers. So, it's going to be interesting to see. I don't think he may be as good as the guy from Miami of Ohio. But... We won't know until, you know, until we get in the game. But if the forecast is going to be what the forecast is in terms of it raining a lot, then he may not be that effective. Um, you know, just depends on what it is. But their defense is not that statistically. I saw they're giving up like 365 yards a game. So, again, that's against two. And, 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 a, and a bunch of that yardage, I believe, was against uh, – uh, Lorenzo Lingard from Akron caught a touchdown on him at the backfield. So, similar to more slot phase with Calvin Davis, I, man, I mean, if it's raining like they say it's gonna rain, I don't know how much they'll throw the ball. But if it's not raining that bad, then yeah, it is gonna be something that we need to we need to address. Need to address the slot fade. Um, simple as that. But. Similar to what I said from the Bethune game, 56-0, to 56-7, fine with me. No injuries. TVD is super accurate in the rain, so we're good. Hey. But you know what? I, I add this on. I'm sure they're going to be playing us off, so TVD is going to have some big windows to fit the ball into. So, um, again, if, if, if TVD is able to throw three or four touchdowns, um, that's, you know, that's going to be great. So, Hopefully, again, like I say, injury-free. Um, seeing Jaden Wayne is going to play a little bit more. Ruben Mayne is going to play a little bit more because of Mesodor and stuff like that. So um, this, is a, this is a good game to get out there before the bye week and just let it all out. And hopefully maybe in the second half we can get, we can get Emory back out there on the field. Off the topic, but did that 30 and 18 almost get converted, but Thune did give us flashback. 30 and 18. But 30 and 18. What play are you talking about? Because I, I wasn't I wasn't at the house. I really didn't watch I couldn't watch the game. I was watching it. Yeah, by Bethune, but what what give me what what play was it? Because I had to watch the I had to watch the game on my phone. Um I had to watch the game on my phone, so I and my phone was kind of the service was kind of in and out, so I really couldn't I really can see, so you have to tell me uh, kind of what play, kind of what play we talking about. What quarter was it? Is it second half or something like that? Because if you're talking about something in the second half, then I can almost guarantee you that I probably missed that. I missed that play. I think I missed that play because I was watching it with Coach Hayes, and I think that's the game where uh, I think the TV man went out or he did something on the computer, and we missed like four or five. We missed like four or five plays. Like even missed them actually scoring. But through that third eighteen, completed a seam route across the middle. Oh, I didn't see that play. No, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't see that play. But it gave you flashback. What did it give you flashbacks of? Uh, North Carolina, Florida State. It gave you those flashbacks. We don't need none of them. <laughs> I guarantee you, we don't need none of them flashbacks. I promise we don't. But yeah, I, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't see that play, man. We was uh, not sure what quarter, but I think it was first half. First half. Uh, are you talking? Wait a minute. Let me ask you this, Wayne. Are you talking about when the second string quarterback was in the game or the starter? Because if you're talking about when the second string quarterback was in the game, flash flashbacks of Danny Diaz. If you talk about when the uh when the second string quarterback was still in the game before he got hurt, before he messed up his shoulder, then yeah, I think I do remember what play you're talking about. Because he did look like he did have a to me it looked like if he wouldn't have got hurt, we were going to, have to tighten up on some coverage. And that's but again, once we get to those particular games, I can 
say those particular things, but that may be the only thing I may be critical of is I'm not completely sold on our pass defense, right? Not completely sold on it. And they're going to get tested. Trust me, they're going to get tested. North Carolina, Florida State, Clemson, and Louisville, they, they, they're going to get tested, right? But, but yeah, if it's the first half and you're talking about the second-string quarterback that ended up starting the game, I think I did. I think I remember that play. But, um, but yeah. But with that being said, man, like, I, like, like I'm going to start saying at the end of my lives, shout out to E. Brown. I'm not going to bloviate, vacillate, or pontificate any longer. <laughs> uh, all about the Canes, baby. Me either not sold the pass cards, but I'm sold in the press for Craig. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wayne, I'm glad you said that. I'm glad you said that. Is it me or I didn't hear anybody say anything about the defensive line being held against Bethune? <laughs> I didn't see no, I didn't see no pictures. I didn't see no slow motion videos of people being held against Bethune Cookman. I didn't see any of that. <laughs> Which lets me know, it's like, bruh, you got to fight it. You got, you got, you got. Listen, you got to fight through the blocks. You are getting held. I saw somebody. I was, I was on Instagram earlier today. I saw a video of Aaron Donald against the 49ers. Snap of the ball. They got three guys dedicated to Aaron Donald. Three guys, and they were holding a little bit. But I heard nobody say nothing about the holding of Bethune. Think about this: if Texas A and M. With those four or five star players we're holding, what the heck do you think Bethune Cookman linemen were doing? I heard nobody say nothing about the holding. And that's my reason why I don't make that big of a deal about the holding because I know our guys hold a little bit. I know guys hold us. But at the end of the day, man, hey, you got to make a play. And nobody said anything about the holding, the lack of holding calls that Bethune Cookman had. But I guess when the talent discrepancy is the way that it was against Bethune, I guess it don't matter, right? But and and and, and guess what? I'm sure ain't nobody gonna complain about the holding against Temple, unless the game is somehow close. That's when holding calls start to matter. Um. Man, know your whole like a man, like a madman. Hey, hey, he's young though, man. He's young. He's young. I expect him. I expect him to listen. I want them to hold. We need to keep TVD upright. If you gotta, hey, listen, because look, I'm so confident that it could be first and twenty. <laughs> hey, wait. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be real with you. Hey, Mel wasn't holding no phone. Mel had that demonstration on on uh on speaker. Mel had Mel had the, the Glock in one hand. Mel had the Glock in one hand and he had that Astro Glock in the other hand. <laughs> Bro, I'm trying to be serious, man. I'm trying to be serious. Bruh, they said man was sitting up with his shirt off. <laughs> wait, 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 they said man was sitting up with his shirt off. <laughs> bro, I'm trying to be so serious right now, bro. I'm trying to talk about Temple, man. And you got me talking about me. Man, they said man was in there with his shit. <laughs> said the assistant coach came in and knocked on the door. He said, Coach, I'm trying to. Hey, he said, Coach, we trying to get that final cut of the. Uh, Oh, the Washington game in Mayo City. <laughs> Mayo said, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I got it right here. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Am I 
her chest hurt, bro. I'm tripping. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Hey, but salute the mail, though. Hey, real talk. Handed it, handed it to him with the same. <laughs> <laughs> man, I told him, hey, look, man, I told him, hey, it's a little greasy. I was, <laughs> I had check out some chicken. It was greasy. <laughs> man, I told him it was a little greasy and just got finished eating some chicken. <laughs> Bro, that's wild. Finishing on top of the Washington film is crazy. <laughs> Wait, I'm not playing with you, bro. I promise I'm not playing with you. Man, I'm about to go, man. Hey. Hey, bro. Hey, man, it's all about the you, man. I'm out, man. Peace, peace.